everybody. Welcome back to another resource review. My name is Danielle. I'm the Community Connections Coordinator at Sarah Riel. And today I'm joined by Jodine Baker from Manitoba 211. Hello. Hi. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here and joining us, especially Manitoba 211 has some exciting things that have just happened. So I'm really excited to hear all about that. But maybe let's just start with the basics of what is Manitoba 211. Sure. Uh, 211 Manitoba is a resource for anyone in Manitoba. It's free. It exists on the web, but also as a phone number. So when we hear people talking about 211, we actually do mean now the phone number 211. It's something that people can access if they need help finding community-based social health or government resources. So really meant to be that front door for help when you don't know where to turn. Oh, amazing. So when someone is wanting to access Manitoba 211, you mentioned online and the phone. So on the phone, are they literally just dialing 211 or is there a number that they should be calling? They are literally dialing 211. Um, it is Manitoba wide, it is 24 seven, it is free, it is confidential. Um, I will note that there are some places that may find that they're having trouble dialing 211. If that happens, there is a 1-800 number that they can call if they're having trouble with that three digit dialing. Um, and they can find that 1-800 number on our, our website, which is mb.211.ca. Okay, excellent. So. Um, you mentioned that it is a free service. Do people need to make an account? I know sometimes for using free stuff, you need to have an account made in advance. Is that something people need to do with um, 211? Not at all. It is you, if it's the first time you're calling, if it's the first time you're going to our website, you can just dive right in. Um, and it's really, as I said, it's just for people who are in the midst, of not necessarily a crisis, but just really feeling that they could use some help from the community. Um, whether you're a parent and you're looking for resources for your children or for yourself, uh, whether you're concerned for someone else, so it doesn't have to be for you. So if you have a parent and you're worried about social isolation or food security issues for them, uh, mental health supports is something that we know that people commonly ask for, uh, or anything from uh, help with employment and training or housing and homelessness. So it really runs that full spectrum of any community-based service or government service that you might be looking for. Amazing. So let's say um, somebody calls then with the new 211 calling service. Who are they talking to on the other line? They are talking to a real person. So I will say, say that it's 24-7 um, you know, and all the car calls as soon as possible. Um, but it's important to note that it's not staffed by volunteers. Um, it's not really a a uh, typical like telemarketer call center model, but rather these are trained professionals who are doing this as a career. So they are information and referral specialists is the, their career choice. Uh, they're referred to as community navigators and they get trained on you know, suicide support, mental health supports. They go through getting certification for that role that they play. And their role really is more than just that referral piece. So sure, someone might call and say, hi, I'm looking for a food bank. So I'm having trouble accessing food. What's the closest food bank? They don't just give you that food bank and then say, okay, thanks, like hang up the phone. They're trained to try and make sure that they're getting at any other resource needs you might have. So they'll go beyond the presenting issue and say, you know, why are you calling? Can I maybe ask about why you have this need for a food bank? Has this been happening for a while? And maybe uh, share with them some resources that the person didn't even know existed. So things like a family resource center or again, help with employment and training if they need it. So it's that um, really the goal of these people who are answering the call is to get that person connected to the supports that they need so that they don't have to call 211 again in the future. Amazing. So they're really taking the time to get to know somebody in the situation that they are calling about. That's fantastic. I love it. So one thing you mentioned that was that the calls were all confidential. Um, yes. So does that mean that you're not, you know, how sometimes when you call a time, there's the, this call is recorded for quality assurance purposes. So yes. is that something that people need to be aware of? Um, they do sometimes record the calls for, as you said, that quality assurance, but all calls, um, none of them are kept for longer than 30 days. And the only reason that they would be uh, kept is first of all, to help ensure that the call answerers are doing a good job. So they use it again to just 
part of that job evaluation for them, or if there are any complaints. So someone has had a negative experience, they actually wouldn't want it to turn into a, you know, the caller said this, the operator said this, they would like to be able to check back on the actual call record and say, okay, here's where things kind of, you know, went wrong and here's how we can help you again. But as I said, no call recording is kept for longer than um, that 30 day period. Okay, excellent. So with the 211 website, how often is the information updated on there? So we are trying to get it updated as much as we can. At a, a minimum, we do it, you know, monthly, we do the, the full refresh of the website. But that being said, um, the database that we have, the 211 Manitoba database, that's what powers both the website and it's what the call operators use when they get a, a call. So that database shows any changes in real time. So let's say that you are an agency and you know that you've just started a new virtual homework club in COVID times. We know there's lots of virtual things. If you connect with us and do that update in the database, it'll immediately be available for the call uh, center op operators. They will be able to see that new information. And then as soon as we refresh the website, that'll become available as well to, on the website. Okay, so it's pretty relevant information. You're not typically going to find stuff from three years ago about a different organization. That's the goal. I mean, we do rely on those agencies that we work with to help us keep their information up to date. So again, as a reminder, if there's any um, one who is part of an agency and they want to be part of 211 or they are part of 211 and they're not sure what their information is, they can absolutely get in touch with us and we'll help to make sure that their listing is as up to date as possible. Excellent. And with the 211 website, when someone goes, are they just typing in a query into a search bar or are there categories or like a map? What does that sort of look like for folks? Yeah, it's, um, it is category. So it's much more powerful than just a Google search. So as you know, if you just go into Google or any generic search engine and you type in what you're looking for, you can sometimes just go down a rabbit hole and all of a sudden you're looking at things that are like 20 kilometers away from you. And you're like, what, how did I end up here? The website, it's very user friendly. So you put in your address. You don't have to, if you don't want to give your exact address, you can put in your postal code. And then there's icons. So you can click on what category you're looking for. So they start off very high level. So you can see I'm looking for um, food support. And then when you click on that main tile, you get some subcategories. So it'll help you say you're looking for meal delivery, you're looking for um, you know, food bank usage. So you can click down to the subcategory and then you'll get the results presented back to you in order of how close they are to you. So the top result will be the one that's closest to you. And then you get all the information, so the phone number, the address, information about the program itself and the services offered. And then you can go ahead and connect on your own. And as always, if you're on the website and you're having trouble or getting frustrated because it's not perfect, um, we love that now there is the two-on-one phone number. So you can pick up the phone and say, I'm on the website, like, help me out here. <laughs> not talk to a robot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. What a great resource that so many people in all of Manitoba can take real advantage of, especially now when resources are so important during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Is there, you mentioned um, categories, is there a specific COVID-19 tab that you guys have on the website? We do have a COVID-19 tab. Um, so right now, and we're actually working to update it. So right now it is a, a, a tab, it's in red because it's a, one that we want to stick out. Uh, right now it is a collection of listings for things that we know people are commonly looking for. So government type um, supports and services. Uh, we are, though, working on developing a bit more of an enhanced search function with some of the top categories related to COVID-19 that we know people are wondering about. Absolutely fantastic. That's so great, Jodine. Thank you so much for sharing such wonderful information about uh, 211 and the new phone line. That's really exciting. I, well, thank uh, you. I do have one last question for you before I let you get back to your day. Um, it's one of my favorite questions. What would you say is your favorite office or home office uh, knickknack? So I'm working from home these days, as many people are. Um, and as you know, it's COVID time. So my, I would say my favorite like knickknack that I have around is my trusty um, bottle of vitamin C tabs. <laughs> <laughs> Throughout the day, I every so often will be like, gotta keep healthy and, and yeah. pop myself a little vitamin C tab. <laughs> That's excellent. That's a good little tool to have right by your desk. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you again so much, Jodine. This was great. We will make sure that we put down
the website information and um, any of that other contact information you mentioned in the description below so that people know um, how to get in touch with uh, 211. So thank you so much. Thank you, Danielle. It's been great. All right. Take care, everybody. You too.